We all hope that you'll never need life insurance, but mortgage payments, child care, and other expenses don't dis disappear when you're gone. Life insurance through your workplace may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it won't follow you if you leave the job. Since life insurance typ typically gets more expensive as we age, now is the time to buy. Policy Genius gives you a smarter way to find and buy the right coverage for you and your family. I actually used Policy Genius to be able to get my policy, and my husband also used Policy Genius for him to get his policy. Especially after we started working together, it really hit me hard when I realized our earnings are tied to each other, especially now that we work with each other. Before, if something were to happen to me, he could continue working at his job. But now if something happens to me, a huge portion of his income would disappear. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't leave him and my children high and dry just in case something happened to me or vice versa. Policy Genius made it so easy. Truly everything they say in this ad is spot on. Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. The technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from the top in companies like AIG and Prudential, just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start just at $17 per month or for about $500,000 of coverage. And Policy Genius has licensed agents who help you find options that offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. They're not incentivized to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. There's no hit added fees, and your personal information is private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. That I can definitely attest to because, you know, when you start searching for something, all of a sudden you get ads all the time for that type of thing. That never happened when I used Policy Genius. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. And five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's a quick angel. She got the bug out. Oh, Angel, thank you so much. Fake yeah. deep just had gone. All right. Mm. Welcome. Before we begin, church announcements. Uh, <clears throat> I am on tour. My last city that I know I don't sell well in, but still decided to go to is this week, Milwaukee. Mm. And I'm not selling well. Surprised <laughs> to say. This <laughs> is the third time both Real Comedian shows that I did in Milwaukee didn't do well. I think one time we were there one night and we had about 217 people. Hurry. We had a show in a library. Mimi and Josh took some cool pictures uh, that day. So uh, pull up. It ain't your fault, Milwaukee. It's the algorithm's fault that you don't know about the show. I don't blame y'all. Y'all over there in the key and y'all just didn't know. So please get your tickets there. And okay. Oklahoma City is the following week. Uh, and then I'll take a day off, a week off. Then I'm in Orlando. In Raleigh and some other places. All right, just go to KevinOnStage.com. Uh, however, uh, Richmond, Nashville, um, RVA, Richmond, Nashville. What was the other one? Or is it this way? I don't know how you guys do the RVA. Richmond, Nashville, Raleigh, and Orlando. Those tickets are selling well. Nice. Well. So yeah. Also, church announcements. Churchy is out. Churchy, I'm out. I'm going out. on the Kevin Thank you, Josh. Oh no, no, no. It is available for watch. Please download the app. Stream it up. I can say the the spike. I'm gonna see. Let me see if I can show y'all. Oh man. Hold on, real quick. That oh, spike looked look like me. the Appalachian Mountains. Let I don't know what you're calling it. Mount Fiji. Nope. 
I look like I'm going to try today because I need him. I need him. Come on, in. Come on. Come on out, Kevin. All right. Here's the let me show y'all the, the spike in Churchy. All right. These are the this is the analytics of Kevin Stage Studios. This you, is you just, oh no, you can't zoom out. Day, no, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to show people the whole thing. The numbers, but just numbers. Oh, okay. This big sp to your right is the day that Churchy released. You can put the mouse over it. Oh no, no, you don't want to show the numbers. I got you. I, Joshua, now I'm, I li I'm trying to understand, Kevin. Don't yell at me. I just want to I give people the idea. No, I don't want to give them the actual again, number. Kevin, don't do it. Boys, let's calm down. That that spike is the day that Churchy released. That's a year, by the way. That's the whole year in 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 app views. So people have come far and wide to come and watch that old Churchy. So uh, somebody say it looks like a temple part of the church. So yes, um, <laughs> Angel Josh made it as a bot, although he uh, he didn't make it as a human. Where he was, I was like, oh, this is the scene that I'm not in. I'm gonna I'm gonna have Mark send over the scene where you made it, just so the, the maybe the stage crew can. Well, see he needed director's cut, Kevin. Director's cut. Angel was in there. At Lori Lee. I got to act with Angel, even though we weren't in the same scenes. I was right here, sitting <laughs> right here in the same spot. <laughs> I uh, Angel. I don't know if you checked your IMDb. I added the credit to you. I said, I, "Oh, I, I didn't see it. Thank I you." I still did. Let me let me pull up the IMDb. Now you're gonna have to listen. There's a you lot have to of scroll uh, a little bit. You have to scroll a little to find this one. No, listen. it's at the top. To go like it's this. At the top. It's my latest acting credit. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah, it should be at the top. All right, let me see. Y'all better go out and vote today. This girl. I want to hear no excuses. Credits. Credits. Look at Angel Akita Moore. Credits. Look back at it. There go Angel Churchy. Oh. Churchy. 2022. Look at my friend, boy. Look at that. Look at these credits. Yes. Oh, my God. I have a lot. That would look, woo, what yeah. this is? What <laughs> is? All nine was a good run. Look at all these episodes of television. I was they in had wow. Angel, they had to, Angel, they had to make the writing small to fit all your credits. Listen, I was only supposed to have been in four episodes of ER. And I serve a God that'll give you more. Mm. Multiply it. You hear me? He multiplied it. So, so Kevin go asked ahead, me. Angel. Angel been torturing me all weekend. So Kevin, I told Kevin, I said, well, you know, I watch Churchy. And he was like, your thoughts? I was like, I'm going to give them to you on the podcast live. I'm not going to tell you on the phone. He's like, Angel, I'm sensitive about my stuff. Do not tell me if you hate it on the podcast. And I was like, why would... Okay, I guess I'm petty, but I'm not cruel. That's what she but said. Then... Am, I, am I cruel? Yeah. Am I mean? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm none of those things. Now, okay, now here's here's... Let me tell you. Let me preface some things. So... Pre-production wise, I I definitely was very much so kind of like knew what was going on with Churchy. I got to see these scripts, rough drafts, second draft, third draft, fourth draft. <laughs> I also got to be a part of the casting process. But then I took a step back because my um my know-it-all spirit and my need to be like, don't do it this way was too mm. overbearing for me. So I said. It was overbearing for me. So I said, let me take a step back. So there were two reasons why I was like, not sure how Churchy was going to turn out. I'm going to be honest. Oh! I didn't know how it was going to be, but I, I wasn't going to say nothing. I was just going to pray the things. Because if I don't have a solution, I'm not going to bring up the problem. So one was when Kevin added me to the show last minute. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you're like, why are you, this is new. Right. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, why is this character all of a sudden existing after y'all done shot all the episodes? This is, are we sure this is what we want to do? So I was hella worried about that because I was like, this is usually not a good sign. 
<laughs> other reason I was a little bit worried was because of Kevin. I got to be inside the audition room with Kevin, acting with these people. And because Kevin had on his writer's hat, his producer's hat, his financier hat, Kevin was giving these people mediocre at best acting performances. He was missing his cues. I was just like, Kevin, get, I don't know what you're thinking about, but you got to give these people a little bit better than that. So I was afraid for him during the shooting process because there's even more pressure because you feel the money going out of your pocket every second. Like every time y'all got to do another take, My every time the light goes out. Recovered, by the way. I'm sure. So I was very much so worried about you being able to be devoted to Corey Carr and giving Corey Carr the best performance possible. I was definitely like, oh, Jesus. And I was really trying to figure out how I was, I was just going to tell you, good job. Is what If it didn't go well, I was just going to be like, good job. Good, good job. You Point, did it. Points on the board, you know? But I have to say, from start to finish, I was thoroughly impressed i thought get uncover your face i thought you let me back to you <laughs> let me back to you first of all i thought you as Corey, you did such a good job and i know your um kevinisms and i felt like there were only a couple of times where you let your kevinisms out instead of just being Corey, which i was so happy i was like okay Corey is a, a separate individual than Kevin Fredericks or Kev on stage. I thought the chemistry between you, Rodney, and um, Shawnee was so good. I thought the casting of the grandmother and y'all, uh, even though she most of her scenes were with Rodney, I thought y'all had some really gorgeous, beautiful moments where you really grounded yourself. I thought uh, scripting-wise, it turned out. So good. I love the pacing of it. Obviously, it looks like you spent a gajillion dollars, which is also. <laughs> and so there is a reason we are touring 58 Josh. of the 52 weeks of next okay. year. Josh, no lie. I, I no know. lie. I know. I am <laughs> out there. Uh, so right. Milwaukee, <laughs> buy those damn tickets, please. Dog, I'm paying for this show joke by joke. You, I hope you are very happy. I hope you're getting the type of um, response that you were hoping for. But regardless, I hope that you are happy with what you made, even without any type of validation from me. But I really think you did the damn thing on this. This is, Churchy is, I really think Churchy's going to sell. I think somebody's going to snatch this thing up sooner than later. Well, I hope so, because that's about the only way season two is going to get made. <laughs> I ain't got it be twice. Uh, I will say the number one question I've been getting, and people have liked it, is can we get all episodes, eight episodes at once? No. Hell no. This is not Netflix. Number one, y'all want to know the truth? They not all edited and done. You hear me? <laughs> Kev and I, Angel, we were in the green room, and Kev was looking at some tweets. He was like, can we get all the episodes? Kev was like, I don't got them. <laughs> I don't have them. It's not like they're in my. They're not locked and loaded. <laughs> they better be glad they ain't getting one a month. Dog, I low key <laughs> thought about that. Churchy first Sundays. Y'all gonna watch this <laughs> for August. Uh, yeah, gonna, it's gonna be a fifth Sunday show. I want y'all to forget everything. Maybe I sent Angel some reshoot stuff last night. Maybe I did. Possibly. Maybe <laughs> really? I'm talking to her about that after this show. Very possibly. It's highly likely. All right? Was, this is the thing that be making me nervous. When I see that, when you, I'll be like, it's not, you're not done? You're not no, finished? Well, this, part of this happened. We knew we wanted to shoot these, but uh, what happened, my brother had died around that time. Oh. So oh. the editor had oh. told me then, but I just didn't have, I did not have the capacity. I was just like, oh. Oh, then he was okay. like, not care for real, like, the only reason I'm still pushing for this, and this is just this is just a second cherry on top of a cherry. Like if we didn't get it, it wouldn't be like, oh yeah, right. But right part right. of it is because people loved Lori Lee. It was always our intention, you know. What I'm saying death, death gets in the way. Uh, mm -hmm. will you sell it? Yes. 
I'll tell you why. Because I want to make it. However, now that I've made the first season, I have a lot more leverage for wanting to control how the show's going to be made. Amen. Uh, not having made it, I would have had much, much less control. Uh, yeah. And no, it's not going to keep dropping two episodes at a time. One every Saturday until we out. There's nothing that y'all can do to make y'all better. Y'all be glad if they even drop on time. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> Y'all be blessed. Uh, no, not Maserati too. Y'all are y'all are understanding the wrong thing. I, if I could turn the Maserati in, I'd be, take that. Take it, take it back. back. Churchy cost what Churchy was going to cost. Churchy did not cost what Kevin thought he could imagine. Kevin well, I'm was. Tell you what was unexpected. The what? the thing that wasn't budgeted that came in way more expensive was COVID testing. Yeah, it's uh, because of SAG rules, you there's a a certain cadence of of um pcr tests that you have to take and rapid tests mm -hmm. and what also happens and this is why it got really expensive people don't read and one covid uh if, if somebody got covid and 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 it wasn't caught until later we would have to shut down production pr production so um i was having to pay for doctors to come to set and do tests rapid onset and that was causing that was that was a lot of money that wasn't budgeted that wasn't that, budgeted it's not cheap rapid. either to get a doctor to come versus getting the cvs instant dog. little joints is a very big cost difference dog so yeah so no it's 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 and and those those rules haven't changed even though covid people don't act like it's real in hollywood you still be testing like you did in 2020, 2021, 2022. No, the rules changed. They did. Mm -hmm. uh, October 1st. Did they? I think you only have to test once a week. Oh, see, now that's way more cheaper. Yeah, I think you only have to. Now it's the producer's discretion if they want to amp that up but require churchy to back in production <laughs> wow. i'm telling you bro that those pcr rapids the doctor coming my parents my parents were like we're not going to no covid we coming to see you y'all y'all supposed to read four i don't think masks are even mm. required wow we had we had listen and we're gonna get to add in one second we have COVID, the team is a whole production department that didn't exist prior to COVID. Just like the camera, grip, electrical, lighting, uh, PAs. COVID is a whole team that has a leader, people under their and, they, and they love they love their job. Yes, plus equipment, plus testing supplies and rush fees. And we was having doctors drive all Oh, It was just COVID alone. Honestly, I'm not even joking. I spent more on COVID then it cost me to make a family exchange probably like four times over. You could have made a, a short film or a independent movie for what I had to spend just in COVID costs. Mm. So let's get to this ad and then we'll start the episode. All righty then. So you guys, holiday season is, a, is upon us. And you know it's the most wonderful time of the year. Everyone puts off shopping until the last minute. And if you have an online store, you know the feeling of getting hit with tons of orders at once. When you're buried in orders and emails from stressed customers, you'll wish you had ShipStation. ShipStation turns holiday ship storms into smooth sailing. So you can keep your customers happy and still find time to enjoy some eggnog. Y'all already know me, Josh, and Kevin were all entrepreneurs that sell merchandising. You like you got merch in your hand, merch. Angel. That Josh, yeah. you sip station four. Fake deep. Mm. Now, when you are dealing with all the things we're dealing with, and we're people who are not just sellers of merch. Kevin and Josh are on tour. I'm working on a show right now. So there's a lot of things that I need automated to relieve the stress off of me when it comes to fulfilling mama likes orders. Well, ShipStation does that by not only automating a bunch of the things that happen for fulfillment, but also by giving me cheaper rates on shipping. ShipStation works for all your favorite places to sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage every order from one simple dashboard, automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, and easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you need to. 
You'll save time, money, and stress during the holiday season. And when you sign up using our promo code, you'll even get two months to try it for free. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of those companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for a lifetime. There are a lot of really great stores that um, use ShipStation. Some of them are Conscious Box, which you should check out, as well as Daily Look and Latched Mama. This holiday season, give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shopping. Use promo code CREW with a K. CREW with a K. Hey. Today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code CREW with a K. CREW, crew with a K. And now you have another podcast. Me? Wait. You. Was that the end of the ad? Yeah. I'm I'm just moving on to the next thing that I wanted to get off my mind. Oh yeah. Let's talk about it, Kev. All right. I have a new podcast coming out. Angel, I'm glad you found this is great. Oh man. I mean, of- it I'm feels gonna- kind of like here's the thing, but I'm just going When he you know- told me, I was like, "Well, I'm going to just update my resume cuz apparently okay. at this point, I mean, Please talk about it, Kevin. I just I, you know, I just want to I want to talk about it. Angel and Josh, you guys are both very near and dear to my heart. I love you. I love you both individually. Oh, that sounds like a breakup. Damn. All right. No. Here's what I want y'all to understand, both you and the people of the world. I don't want to be on tour this much. No more. <laughs> I am trying to find ways that I don't have to tour as much. I don't want to be doing cities three times a week. So what I decided is... <laughs> A podcast is nothing more than a YouTube video done three times. That's all it is. <laughs> Angel, God. come back. Angel, come back. God damn. Out in the sit. Hello. What? <laughs> uh, this is nothing more than silly stories that, that are old on the internet. They will never be, here's the thing, here's the thing type stories angel josh relax and if it doesn't work and if it's too close i i have i have stopped shows before i will do it again Kevin, do what you have to do to survive i'm not going to judge you i'm not going to be mad at you yes i will but i'm not going to i'm going to do all the things i just said i wasn't going to do but i'll still continue being your friend i just hey. I ain't gonna jeopardize this podcast now. Hear me, hear me good. I, I believe you. That I believe you on that. Is you know on the show. I have tried not to. Dang, I'm, I I clicked the wrong comment, which was somebody just, uh, uh, saying, "Oh Lord, where to go?" Is, is Angel, Angel on the show? There it is. Angel has not been asked to be on the show because Angel is currently shooting a television program. Uh, when she's off, Angel is always welcome on anything. I try not to monopolize her time. I do it. <laughs> I, I do it. I just try not to. So imagine if I was not even trying, how much time I would take of hers. Oh um, my god! So when does it? When does it launch? It doesn't launch until January. Okay. When is it and shooting? Also, there will never be any serious subjects covered. There will never be any trending topics covered. Uh. If there's a story that would work for both, it will go to here's the thing. This is the leftovers. This is the remnant. And there's no guarantee that it even works, guys. It's going to work, Kevin. All your shit works. No, it does not. Coming to the stage, no, no, worked. Very hard. Can I just... It it was good. Can I just say this? I know we're trying to get to this. Before you say something. Nobody has to co-sign nothing. It's Kev on stage studios. Kevin co-signs it and then signs it again. It goes Kev on stage, then Kevin Fredericks. There's two, right. There's two Dear owners. Kev, I stopped doing Dear Kev too, but I will do. I will stop a show. All right, go ahead, Angel. Um, uh, it's two quick things. One, that's the only reason why I'm trying to take. Here's the thing on the road. I really am like trying to come up with ways, not just for me. But for you as well to make more money in a shorter span of time. Yes. That's it. That's really that's the reason why I was like, oh, I'll do a podcast tour because 
I, they look, appear, at least I could be completely wrong, but the podcasts that I have seen do very successful tours seem more a little more lucrative because they're doing such short stints. Yeah. That's that's the only reason why. And number yeah. two, I'm mad that y'all didn't get to see my baby kill it this weekend. I'm mad too, Andrew. I am. I was very sad. Uh, Melissa went and saw little Marcus and Willy Wonka. Marcus hugged little Marcus, and I saw it on Angel Stories. And I had to tap, I tapped past it because I felt I emotion. And I, I came I back and I watched it again. I, I was it. like, that was just such a just a great moment between father and son. Just your father being there at, at the thing that's important to you. That's all it was. I loved it. I did. Oh, mm -hmm. I sure loved it. So, Marcus, um, Marcus had to fight back tears the first, the first night when he came out for the tour. He said, obtain out for the bow. Excuse me. He was like. I had to fight the tears back because I didn't know if I'd be able to stop them once they started. <laughs> he was yeah. like, I was going to be. Now, I just wept. I didn't care. I wept. Sure. I wept. And then at the last show, the cast before Lil Marcus came out, they all did this to like welcome him out to the stage because he's the final bow. That's right. <laughs> that was me. That was me. He Yo, had to do a little. Angel, show what you did. <laughs> he did a little speech that I'm going to post today to thank the director. They had him do a little speech and I forgot my child had never been in a musical. And he said, this is my first musical ever in the audience. I mean, I erupted the loudest, but the audience erupted because he was just so good. But anyway, he was so just charismatic. The dimples were dimpling. They were like, this is our time too, guys. It was yeah. <laughs> like it's it's us, it's us. I'll tell y'all what happened to coming to the stage. It is very difficult to book people, stars, yeah. celebrities, their schedules changing in my schedule and paying people. It was just boy, you can't have nothing. It was just too hard, man. It's too hard. So, all right, enough of all that. Let's go. Let's do it. Big Marcus's favorite artist, Drake. <laughs> was in some hot water over the weekend. He released an album with uh, 21 The Savage. And he, so I'll, I'll tell you how I heard of it, not necessarily how it went. First, I hear Drake, uh, Drake made fun of Megan The Stallion getting shot. Drake, I'm sorry, Drake, Drake said Megan lied about getting shot in one of her songs, right? Immediately, the timeline became singularly focused on Drake, right? So then the screenshots start coming up and basically he said, you lie about shots, some, something along the lines of lie about shots about BBL, but she's still stallion, something like that. So then Drake defenders were like, um, first of all, he's not even talking about Megan. He's talking about girls who lie about BBLs. And I'm like, now listen. Well, I, what, made it, what made it harder about that argument too is Yachty went on live and said that verbatim. Said what? That what you said that he's not talking about Meg. He's talking about women getting BBLs and they're still stallions because they're yeah. built like stallions. Yeah, but it's a double entendre because he's a rapper and I know Drake because I'm little Yachty is what he said. That's now, my here's friend. The thing. Here's the thing. Drake knows the internet. I refuse to believe that Drake and all of, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about like Kendrick Lamar, who said he threw away his phone for months at a time, maybe even a year, he said, uh, just to focus on his music. Drake is not that type of rapper. He doesn't try to be. He is a pop culture. He is a hip hop, hip pop rapper. He makes pop culture rap music. He makes Instagrammable caption rap music. He's very connected to the internet. That's why his little uh, his uh, his beef with uh, Meek Mill was so internet heavy, right? He had the whole memes in the background. There's no way Drake chose those words and did not know that's how people would respond, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't believe that he couldn't have made that point without making that connection. So oh yeah, let's just stand ten toes down. If you're gonna do it, do it. Well, only thing worse than doing it. Is doing it and hiding your hand, being like, come no, on. what I was talking. Now, no, no, come on, Drake. Don't we not dumb? 
There's a right. million different ways to say girls are getting BBLs and lying about it without saying lying about shots still a stallion. Come on. Yeah. It and seems you know, uh, very like, obvious. No, I'm just going to say it seems very obvious, even to me. Okay. And I don't be catching a lot of. Stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> but what was interesting is this is the first time in a minute that, at least on my timeline, the overwhelming response was like, yo, Drake is kind of lame. And I, uh, people were just like, I'm kind of sick of this. Like, like, first of all, we talked about Meg a million times. I don't believe that she's lying about this. Tor, Tor, she's not even the only person who's accused Tory Lane of a violent act. Mm. Right? August Alcina, he had beef with him. He like there's like two or three other people. So it's not like Tory Lanez is just a person that this is the one incident that he's ever had. So I don't believe Megan has any reason to lie about this. Uh, I think Drake will ride whatever. Drake's desire to be liked and relevant is Michael Scott's desire to be liked. Mm -hmm. it, it is his single driving factor is to be relevant. That's why he will jack somebody else's flow. He'll use somebody else's, uh, some other culture's um, accent. Whoever has a hot song from McConan to Block Boy JB to whoever, whatever, if grime is tie, uh, hot, I'll rap grime. If drill is hot, I'll rap like whatever is popular, he will ride bounce music, house, whatever he yeah. can do to stay relevant, he will do. Even to, at, to this point, to his own um, demise, because it was like overwhelming. People were like, all right, nigga, enough out of you. I know you ain't talking. Apparently, and I didn't know this, Drake's apparently rumored to have gotten his own plastic surgery. I, apparently, <laughs> a lot of people believe that the abs is not uh, naturally... Um, naturally built yeah i surely uh, when i saw dr miami do I, a whole, you saw that yes i was like that what is that i said oh lord this man had entered the chat listen i i, I try to hold on let me find that tiktok actually a lot of white men have entered the chat since they, drake uh they saying drake is uh a sassy white woman <laughs> Well, no, Dr. Miami didn't say he did his lipo. He said he wasn't going to do his second round of lipo. Meaning, you know, these uh, plastic surgeons, they can tell when somebody's had work done, even when it's the best work. Mm -hmm. That's what they're hoping that they can. And I wouldn't be surprised. Like, men be getting, these male stars be getting lipo. Like, mm -hmm. they are like, I, they be hungry just like the rest of us. And some of them ain't got the self-control. Look, we all stopped. He said, because I'm a hottie first. It is ridiculous. Like, I really don't understand why there is this huge debate on whether or not she's telling the truth. Because at the end of the day, I really don't know what she would have to gain from this man taking the fall for her getting shot in the foot. Like I, that is, once someone can explain that to me, then I can maybe understand what this ridiculousness is of why she would randomly pick a dude that she was in the car with to blame for her foot bleeding because there's no criminal charges being pressed against her. There wasn't any when she left the hospital and first had, had didn't admit to him shooting her. So there is no gain, not monetary, not, um, press wise because to be honest this it hasn't been great press for her no uh, people uh, people who ain't got no business in it like ourselves are you know still talking about it it's not something that you're like let's relive when i got shot in the foot but you know what i'm saying she's not a uh, game game rapper where it elevates you for clout like 50 cent getting shot nine times helped his i'm a game right. bang rapper that's not even her style of rap she has nothing to gain from getting shot at all so i really don't understand what niggas problems are and why they feel like and and to your point 
Uh, I was actually, I just went to this one situation uh, where we were talking about our fears. It was this one thing at my son's school. And I remember the head of the school saying, you know, a lot of people have the fear of being irrelevant. And the fear of being mm -hmm. irrelevant will cause you to do things, to act in a way so that you, you feel as if your voice matters in certain circles and in certain situations. Because literally... There's no reason to bring her up on the song. Y'all don't really have any type of, y'all weren't in the car. Nobody's connected. But like, for some reason, you think, oh, me saying, oh, uh, no, I'm talking about the shots she put in her butt. First of all, why are you worried about what other women are putting in their butt? Unless you're talking about probiotics, right? And Ritual <laughs> has clinically studied strains, okay? Okay. Because a lot of them don't. Ritual Symbiotic Plus contains two of the world's most studied strains with over 350 published publications of human clinical trials. I have so gotten into um, my gut health because a lot of like uh, chronic conditions, a lot of health issues can start inside of the gut. So for me, I'm like, yo, I want to make sure my gut health is strong, is good because I'm trying to I'm trying to live my best life. And I know my intestines, my colon are a part of me living my best life. So what makes the components so um, uh, clearly ritual? They're science-backed and research-stacked, especially when stacked up against the leading direct-to-consumer and top-selling probiotics on the market. Three-in-one with clinical study, prebiotics, probiotics, and a probiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. A single nested minty capsule, one um, daily capsule for simple, simple streamlined gut support. Delay release capsule designed to help reach the colon, not the stomach. An ideal place for probiotics to survive and grow. No refrigeration needed and designed with a moisture control bottle technology to protect probiotic strains. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. And there's no more shame in your gut game. That's why Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off their first three months. Visit ritual.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. Start your ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. And then after you get your gut together, let's see what we're putting in our stomach, right? And if you're not putting farm fresh foods in your stomach, What's it all for, y'all? The holidays are around the corner, and HelloFresh makes this time of the year easier because it's so busy, right? Uh, and you're getting chef-created recipes with pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your door so you can spend less time meal planning and prepping. Save money on dinner with HelloFresh and put, put it towards your holiday shopping. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less than takeout. Y'all, I work 12-hour days when I'm shooting um, the show. 12 hours. A lot of times I have to wake up at three o'clock so I can be on set at 4 a.m. I, I get off at like four, sometimes later, sometimes five. I drive back home and I still cook that Hello Fresh. Yeah, Let you me I went over your house one time and you cooked it. Because <laughs> I'm not playing, okay? Um, one, because it is truly simple. You just chopping up the vegetables like they say on the picture, okay? Then you do travel the rest of the thing and the meal is together in 30 minutes. I didn't save myself so much money. I have taken away the stress of having to figure out what my kids are going to eat. And I feel good as a mother because I know my kids are getting fresh vegetables, which, you know, there ain't nothing. Listen, I, I just... I cannot articulate enough how good it is. With over 35 weekly recipes, there's something to please everyone. You can easily customize your recipes by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading to choice proteins, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. Quality is HelloFresh priority. Ingredients travel from the farm to your door in less than seven days, so you know that they're fresh. Whether you're hosting a holiday party or just stocking up on snacks, you'll find everything you need at HelloFresh Market. For quick breakfasts to charcuterie boards and desserts, it's never been easier to prep for a party or to fill your pantry. Green Chef and Every Plate are now owned by HelloFresh, and with a wider array, a wider array of meals to choose from, there's something for everyone. And I love being able to switch between brands, and now our listeners can enjoy both brands on, with a discount on us. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SK65. SK65. Use code SK65. SK65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SK65. 
SK65. And use code SK65. SK. For 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. One of the prevailing thoughts is that Drake is doing this because <laughs> he likes Megan and she wouldn't, she's not interested in him. What helps that case is that he also threw shots at Serena Williams' husband. Uh, and if you remember, Drake and Serena Williams dated for a brief period of time a couple years ago. Drake has a history of outing girls that he's with and just being flippant about their lives. I just be like, I, I don't be checking for Drake's music like that. I I just don't be interested. I wasn't interested in the, I I don't think I've. It's been years since I pressed play and went to the end of a Drake album. I do. And I here, say, and here was on. my experience with listening. Album starts. Kind of fire. It's giving me uh, that future tape. Uh, what a time to be alive. That type of energy. And I know like this is what Drake's been fiending for. Because he hasn't really got that rapper opportunity to be in that conversation with his last albums. And like um because he did more singing then he did like a dance album um but i got to that line and i honestly didn't even hear it i didn't really hear it because the way my add works when i listen to music is i get caught up in a melody and the beat and then i'll go back and listen to the lyrics so i started seeing the the rhetoric on twitter and i was like oh no so i i didn't finish the album because that was the night that we left that was uh, when we had that red eye so i literally didn't get to that part of the album coherently i was probably asleep um so i re-listened i was like why did you do that and that same song is when he also threw shots at uh serena's husband serena's husband um and like the the song title is literally called crazy circus sampled with daft punks one more time which was really interesting um but i'm like you didn't need to do this. <laughs> like, to there's do no this. reason. And <laughs> and like over the and, and after that too was when the when the rhetoric started developing more is where I started seeing all the shots like the the itemized list. He went at Drom, who Drom has literally been not in the conversation with Drake since the Cha Cha uh, the Cha Cha remix, which that was its own entire debacle. Tell them real quick, Josh, because I didn't even know that. Tell them about the Cha Cha okay. Remix. So the Cha Cha Remix uh, was put out on like a Dat Piff style, like SoundCloud. It wasn't really put out, put out because this is when Drama was first starting. Uh, Drama is a Virginian native as well. 757. Um, 757. Um, so when that when he put that song out, Drake, I guess, was already using that sample for the Hotline Bling. I don't know the exact timeline. Anyway, that came out and w- ended up being one of Drake's biggest songs of all time. That was the one that Director X did, where it was just the big room with a bunch of like shapes, mm-hmm. white background. He was doing a weird dance, huh? The Cha Cha Remix is what Drake's Hotline Bling was originally titled Cha Cha Remix. Yeah, because drum song is was called what Cha Cha. I like the Cha Cha. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Okay. Come that on. Song was, yeah. Fire Drake, too. That Drake song was going his, crazy. Yeah. They. I, I was on Twitter and they actually pulled up articles where Cha Cha, uh, re. I mean, Hotline Bling at that time was still called Cha Cha Remix. But then mm-hmm. Drake tried to act like he didn't take the song or wasn't inspired by Drum, and he was. Drum was like, "No, nah, that's not even like debatable." So then Drum tried to pull up on Drake. And his bodyguards beat up Drum, and Drum was like, "Yeah, I took that L, but don't act like you whooped me. Like your security right. guards were strong, and they did have hands." And literally, but like, in like, Drum's <laughs> caption of the video was like, "I woke up to some BS," and he literally looked like he just woke up out of bed. His voice was still raspy, his eyes—he was going like this. But yeah, he, he. Long story short, on that, he was like, "Don't call me out for because I guess the line was uh, um, something along the lines of like uh, Drum tried to cha cha, but he didn't know how we slide or something like that." Um, so he tried to reference, like, I put hands on drum, but drum was just like, first of all, no, you didn't your bodyguards. <laughs> they, and he was like, oh, they, they took care of the boy. Like they, they, they put me in place. But if it was a one-on-one thing, you have not yet to see me once on this. And we see each other. I am pause, pause so, remix. I'm so glad that you did the, I like the cha-cha. Cause I was like, booty. I, I know you needed a melody. That's why I had to dig it out. 
I was in the booty tape, but I didn't want to slow you down. I could see your momentum, and I was like, I'll ask him later. I'll just so, put it in. Um, yeah, oh, so, I mean, the full circle on this, though, is, like, I I do enjoy parts of the album, but it's a, there's a sour taste in my mouth, and, like, I'm really disappointed that Drake dug deep in the backpack that nobody was even looking in to bring right. stuff out and, like, mention stuff that wasn't even necessary. Is it? Is he? Do you feel like there's some... It, it's weird to think that he would have, like, for real insecurities because... He's definitely he insecure. Has, it's not, Angel. Okay. Okay, I think well. that is the... Think about how many times Drake has gotten publicly curbed. Remember when he, he went... Uh, Rihanna on that... Uh, was it Movie Awards? Oh, man. I don't, I don't know. know. He got embarrassed by Rihanna. All the smoke for everyone but Pusha T. Where is the Pusha T bars? What? Remember what happened? You went at Pusha T with the Virginia Slim thing, and then Pusha T was like, you got a baby. Your friend's finna die. This is that. And then Drake was like, Jay Prince told me I can't say nothing to you. No. So you pick on Megan and Drum Horn doing nothing. But Pusha T is... Pusha T still going, yeah, and rapping about cocaine untouched. Everybody, right. else. Serena Williams' husband, that's who you decide to throw and, a and, and, he a mentioned, and he didn't mention, he didn't mention the Kanye thing again, of course, because he's like, I, I linked with the ops, but I did it for Jay Prince. And then people had that uh, quote with him crying at the Kanye concert when it was about the, the, uh, the song that, um, was it Runaway, that Kanye ended up flipping for like a Kim version. Like, yeah. like he was like well enough in the face, bro. <laughs> um, Lord. I I really I just I am confusion about this man. I am. I'm very much, and this is also why I'm confusion because, like yourself, Kevin, I've never been a big Drake a fan. There's about four, I think I might even give him five songs of his that I'm like, oh, this box. But for the most part, I, you know, I realized he wasn't speaking to me. He was speaking to a different generation. So I yeah. said, I just, I, you know what? I just give up and y'all go ahead and have them. So for this to happen and then everybody has this laundry list of shit that he's done, stuff that he's done, I'm like, <laughs> Well, wait a minute now. How you? What? Why did y'all say this before? Why am I just now hearing right. about this and acting foolish? Why y'all? We've been having to listen to this uh, nasally sounding man all this time, and we could have said no before now. That was five minutes long of where my hug at energy. Oh man! I he love went for the kiss, Kev. I, he went for the kiss and got cheek. Oh, everybody was watching. <laughs> That's what you're gonna get is cheek. I, t- I remember seeing that. You what, Angel? <laughs> I said I remember seeing that now. It just okay. wasn't. <laughs> I just was like, I didn't expect her to kiss him. So he that was what it was. Pivotal, was that like, might have been the pivotal moment in his I I am the victim. I'm I'm the victim point in his career. That was his villain origin story, Josh. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got to. You should have did it while you were small, Angel. Jesus. Hold on, Angel. Let me protect you. Let me protect you. It is just, it is riding up in there. It's funny because we can, we can still see her backstage. We can see her backstage. We could protect our, we protected our friend. That bodysuit oh, said enough. That thing. Okay. I just had to move it over. I had to put it on the side of my butt. Yeah. It's still on the inside. Oh. Uh... Jesus. <laughs> hey, oh, look at the relief in your face, Angel. You it was so right. much. It was relaxed now. It was probably as painful as y'all watching that Drake thing. <laughs> thing was trying to cut me in half. <laughs> 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 so bad. Well, you know, I don't know what his hope is for this. I don't know who agreed to it. And, and also, like, even with the stuff that y'all said that he's done, Drake doesn't like there are some dudes that are just like love to be grimy and they do it well, like future. He just be like, I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be an ass. And this is this is going to be my brand. Yep. I feel as though it doesn't work with the brand that I feel like 
Drake came came into yeah. the industry with. So it feels weird. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this whole being a dick thing is just like, what what are you doing? Like <laughs> you are closer to me to a Justin Bieber yeah. than uh, you know what I'm saying, than whoever you're trying to be. It that's what's it's just not. You're right. Yeah, we're gonna start listening to you, babe. Marcus do be having some discernment. I mean, he's he, a little he's, he's a judgmental. Been, he been but. listen, this is like when LeBron James went to Miami and it was the first time in his career people didn't like him and he tried to be the villain and he realized he's not like that. Some yeah. people are 50 Cent, he relishes it. He's like, This is me, I don't care. Take me as I am. Future, I'm trash, I'm toxic. All you can do is own it. But Drake yeah. ain't really like that. I don't think he's going to. I, I don't, don't try to be a thug. I wasn't born in the streets. I didn't grow up fighting. I grew Ooh, up you being are a thug. You I are a thug. No, you're a thug. That pit bull you got in your house. <laughs> Lamont Arias. Right. <laughs> Listen, this is hilarious. Drake is Aubrey's longest role. That man Hi. is trying to act like a rapper. This that man, is so hilarious. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Drake is definitely he's definitely trying to play this part that he is it's not his typecast he's got to no. come up out of it come up out of there <laughs> I love how you just yelled that is that it I barely heard you say it again come up out of there you know the reason why I had a hard time hearing you is because I ain't got on my Raycons that's and why I yeah. the holiday season yet no, literally, why not? You know, most gifts don't go bad, right? The only thing that'll go bad between now and December are the crowds at the mall. 12 children scream, 11 minutes parking, 10 Karen's Karen, the list goes on and on. Right Karen's now, you Karen? was that really yeah. in, the, in the copy? Uh huh. <laughs> right now, you can shop early, skip the lines, and snag uh, one of the best deals of the season on something everyone will love premium audio products from Raycon. When you're looking for a gift everyone needs, or uh, stocking stuffers that's not a candle for once. Raycons are the way to go. Their wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, useful features, an almost custom comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life. And as the person gifting them, you've got to look, you've got to love that they'll start at half the price of other premium auto brands, audio brands, excuse me. Plus, Raycon makes it easy with the holiday gift guides for everyone in your life. <clears throat> Listen, I got tons of children and they all have their tablets, their switches and all that stuff. And I don't want to hear none of it. That's why I'm excited about being able to use Raycon so that I ain't got to hear the theme songs to these stupid games that they play. Pop your Raycons in the ear and let me have my peace and quiet <laughs> or knock out the list all at once and get 80 uh, get 30 excuse me get 30 percent off by shopping raycon's holiday bundles um you know what i like about raycon is the the fit and how comfortable it is i've told y'all before i have very little bitty ear holes so some of those other type of earbuds they really hurt raycon's fits perfectly and they don't fall out you know what everyone doesn't need? Two little white stems hanging out their ears. Lit Luckily, Raycons are sleek and stylish, and they come in a range of colorways to match anyone's style. You can find Raycons in store now, like Kohl's or Walmart, but let me tell you right now, you're always going to get the best deal when you use our special link. Buyraycon.com slash SK. SK! The Raycon website offers uh, buy now, pay letter options as well. So right now, go to buy, excuse me, right now, go to buyraycon.com slash SK. 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 Code early BF to get 20% off site wide. That's 20% off any Raycon product, which almost never happens. Or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. That's code early BF. Early BF. Uh-huh. At buyraycon.com slash SK. SK. For 20% off your Raycon purchase. Buyraycon.com slash SK. SK. As we record this episode, it is election day, midterm Wait. elections. Go out and vote if you haven't done your early voting uh, just yet. 
I saw this on the Twitter that was, you know, basically the premise is how much do men know about women's bodies because they are voting on them. With nothing further, I'll present to you this this video, which I thought was very funny and and very interesting. Can you pee with a tampon? I don't think it's recommended. Welcome to another episode of Roe v. Bros, the game show where we find out how much men know about women's bodies. Can you pee with a tampon in? I think you got to take it out. I've seen the little tampon trash cans in the uh, bathroom, so probably why. Why are there different types of tampons? Uh, different sizes of vaginal cavities. About how many tampons would one use for their period on average? One or two? I think one, to be honest. One. And it, they put them inside. Oof. Yes. Oof. What is a period? What is a period? It's uh, the time of the month where the woman is ovulating. Can you pee with a tampon in? No. Okay, no. All right. Are you registered to vote? Yes. Are you registered to vote? Yes. Are you registered to vote? Yes. Don't let man brains outvote women in the upcoming election. Vote November 8th. Genius. It's really good. So before we start, Josh, I got to be honest, before we get to Angel, who has a coochie, uh, me and Josh don't have some. The only yeah. one I wasn't sure about uh, off the top of my head was how many tampons per menstrual cycle. I said to myself, hmm, probably varies per person. I say maybe two or three a day for five to seven days. I said somewhere between 15 and 20. I didn't know exactly. And she said 20. The other ones <laughs> were so basic. I mean, I literally, and I'm not even, I remember asking when I was a kid in sex ed in fifth grade, I said, do girls pee out of their butt? Because they sat down. So I was like, do they pee out of their butt? And the lady showed us the butt. She showed us the vaginal opening and the urethra. Somebody on Twitter, a woman posted a picture of the water coming out of the refrigerator and the ice and was like, these are the these are like how the two holes work. OK, one has water. It's separate from the other one that has ice. We got three holes. Yeah, you got. But... That's actually the ice, the buttholes, the ice hole. <laughs> the fact that these that man said one tampon. One? How, how would one even work? How would I? I had, and I'm listen. Maybe I'm different because I've been on the Love Hour. We had, you know, period doctor, but they teach you these things. They teach you what a period in sex ed in elementary, middle school, or high school. They teach you what a, he said. When a, how could it? How could a period be when a woman is ovulating? If how that's how could it be both? If the period is telling you that you, in fact, the egg was not uh, inseminated, how could it also be how you didn't know that? Because men don't be knowing. Men Josh, don't. How many of those did you know? How many of those? I didn't. I didn't know the the number. I was gonna it's guess. About two a day. What'd you say? Three. You said three to five, Kev. I said two or three a day per day, and I and I think most cycles are between five and seven days on average. So mm. I was going to guess between fifteen and twenty-one, but I don't. I, I, didn't, I knew it wasn't the ovulation period. I knew it was when excess needed to be removed. Um, mm. but yeah, the exact number I I don't know, and I feel like that fluctuates. It definitely fluctuates. Like if you, if you ain't in your prime no more, if you ain't in your teens and twenties, you more than likely ain't bleeding that that heavy where you switching it out or even that many days. Uh, so twenty. If I had to use twenty now, yeah, like somebody said, I'd be like, come get this uterus. I don't need it. Come get it. I don't want it no more. I'm tired of this. I don't want it. Now I will admit, my first time. Having to learn how to use a tampon, nobody was at the house with me. So I didn't know if I could pee with it in. I was like, wait, what is going to happen? I wasn't sure if it was just going to fall out was really what it was. Oh, no. I was like, is this going to, how? You were by how? yourself. Your mom, your mom had taught you previously? No. I wanted to go swimming at this church event. 
So it was, I knew I couldn't wear no pad, but that's all I was used to. So I was at the house by myself and I was like, I knew that I could use a tampon. So I was able to get it in there. But then I was like, wait, is this going to fall out when I use <laughs> the bathroom? I was like, I don't know what if the like everything opens up for the pee to come out. I didn't know what was going to happen. Because unlike you guys, y'all get to see everything y'all have just by looking down mm. or looking in the mirror. You can't well, we do don't, We don't get to see our booty hole too often. Booty hole, that, yeah. That no, requires we, some effort and uncomfortable positioning. But you see your entire testicle sacs, mm. your scrotums, in your whole penis. You, We don't usually get to see our innards unless we pr uh, prop a mirror up in a certain way. We don't get those uh, opportunities as often as you might think. So I am not surprised that these men are getting it wrong because there is very much so a lack of discussion around women's body parts, even a lot of times amongst women. But, but I yeah. feel like at that age, you were you were you were under 16, I imagine, when you when you first learned that. These yeah. men, they look most of them twenty to thirty plus. The point, obviously, is men are making decisions about women's bodies without knowing about them. And obviously, if there was a man who knew all the right answers, he wouldn't have made the cut because that doesn't help make the video's point. But some of the things were so off that it's like, now how you didn't know that with just basic information. I yeah. wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> and that's if your body is working just regularly. Imagine if we add things like somebody put on here. Imagine if you add things like fibroids. Or Imagine PCOS. if you add yeah, anything. Oh, yeah, being polycystic. Oh, now you're talking about you think 20 tampons. Yes. <laughs> Let's and just put on a diaper. It depends on the person. That's why that was a I, I was just like, and I I didn't know exactly. I just feel like three probably seems right you know you men, I, men usually know about the flow because you if you try to run that red light you, you one of the questions to ask is how where you at flow was you know? <laughs> if you try to run that red, you light. Run that red light you hey now because you don't want to run it on the heaviest of heavy you want to run it at the very beginning of the tail end if you want to run it you want to really mm -hmm. be kind of am it's turning red or it's about to turn back to green like like a like a green to yellow not uh not a yellow to red yes amen and this was so was so you don't want to do that. Mm -mm. Into the thick of it. <laughs> What's so crazy though is is that we've never had to vote on any men's health issues. No. Never. I've never had to anything that like prostate cancer, I've never had to even though prostate cancer can affect women, testicular cancer, there we go. There you go. Uh, I've never had to educate myself in a way to make an informed decision on a man's life ever. Yes. And I have. And the thing is, is I actually probably know more than, than what most do because I have four boys. And so I'm having to learn everything that they're, even though I know I have a wealth of knowledge already, but I'm having to learn even more because I'm growing boy children. But I've never had to vote on how the legislation will apply to their health specifically to so to think right. that 49% of the 49 percent of the population that is a voting age has that has not ever had to deal with anything that uh, comes with being biologically born a female and they're like let's have a say on this because why not and it never would ever have if if there were something to happen that affected men only on some health thing, ain't no way men would allow that to be uh voted for by it voted for period. It girl, whatever men want it to be, it will be. Right. I just I, I it's crazy. But I did vote today in California, they have one proposition, it's measure one that I, I almost got a little confused on. I was like, no, wait, what are you trying to tell me? So 
I measure one is where I do believe it's measure one. We have 57 things to vote on in California. Just that early, man. You can't, you can't read it in the polling booth. You, you, we, me and Melissa, no. get our paperwork. We got to sit down and go. I feel like that's, why I, do, that's why I do the home ballots, man, because it comes yeah, with the booklet. I get to sit with it for a week and go back to it. If oh, I know, I just be in the booth for 30 minutes. Confused? It's like y'all, do y'all want me to be confusing? Yes, yes they, they do. do. They do. No, I was in the booth for 30 minutes. I didn't care. I was like, ain't nobody here. I'm gonna take my time. My back started hurting and everything. <laughs> but uh, with measure one, it's on reproductive rights. And I was like, no, hold on, California, wait up. What are we doing? But with measure one, they're making it so that this constitutional right cannot, like the California constitution is what will determine women's voters, uh, women's reproductive rights versus it being able to be a proposition that can be uh, like, uh, you know, mess with like it can yeah. be in other states. Because I was about to vote no. And I was like, no, women, what are you saying here? Hold on. Yeah. So I had to sat there and read a whole article. And I sure did. Sure did. Yeah, they, you got to get that paperwork ahead of time. They The, the radio commercials, boy, I, well, this week when we were in Pittsburgh, every other commercial was a political ad. One for the person and then the opposite for the person. One for the measure in the pro, then the opposite for the measure in the opposite. The homelessness, there's I a homelessness, homelessness to... debate in uh -huh. LA this year and that's both pe the people running for mayor that is their number one uh thing what will you do for homelessness i want this guy's i would have three hundred thousand beds in 30 days and then the ladies she he wouldn't have do it and then they're on the radio th th this homeless thing they gonna go to the casino i, I was like what are y'all even everybody don't talk to me just let me yeah. read about it myself and you know the only reason why they talk about homelessness now is because of the Olympics coming here. Hmm. That's the only reason why. they like, let, let me tell you how we're going to get rid of these people from off these streets <laughs> when the people come to see us to do the games. Have you seen, I've seen this documentary on how the Olympics basically destroys the infrastructure of whatever city it's in. Have you, have you seen this? No, uh, uh, man, the the I believe it was, this one specifically highlighted the Olympics in uh, Rio de Janeiro, I believe. I want to say uh -huh. this is Brazil. They erect all these stadiums and all this infrastructure specifically for the Olympics. And essentially, once the Olympics are over, a lot of these cities have no reason or nothing to do. So these, yeah. these stadiums basically just become uh, abandoned immediately and then become derelict. And the longer the Olympics are away, the worse it'd be looking. It'd be like, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's cool for like, you know, those the month or so. Olympics are about roughly around three weeks, three and a half weeks. Yeah. So it takes years to build up for them. Money wise, policy wise, all that stuff. Three and a half weeks, it's over. And then your city is just destroyed. I might leave L.A. for the whole Olympic period. And I want to go to the Olympics one day, but I want to go. I don't want it to be. I want to compete in the Olympics one day. Why are you laughing at me? Why are you laughing, Kev? I want to compete. What would Kev, you what, what what sport why would you, why would you, I don't you know. like open dream? They I don't know, but they add sports all the time. And eventually I mean, I'm gonna be good at one of them damn things. They got rifling, maybe they'll have shot uh then maybe they'll have like pistoling. Well you just I wanna do something in the in the in the thing. I don't know what. I wanna, but when I go, if I go, Kevin, if I go, don't at me. Twerking this. Don't even, and don't even show up, Kev. Because well, I'm going to clip my this. Friend Angel. No, don't even show up. Because I'm going to clip this. I'm going to be like, remember the time you laughed at my friend's hope and dream? Right. <laughs> I mean, you just covered your face. You didn't even You didn't even ask. You just laughed. Did you see this? Did you see this? Uh, hold on. When did racism against white people become okay? Joe Biden put white people last in line for COVID relief funds. Kamala Harris said disaster aid should go to non-white citizens first. Liberal politicians block access to medicine based on skin color. Progressive corporations, airlines, universities, all openly discriminate against white Americans. Racism is always wrong. The left's anti-white bigotry must stop. We are all entitled to equal treatment under law.
Oh American. My God. Can we, can we talk about how crazy the ads are this 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 come around? I was in Arizona yeah. a couple weeks ago and one of the ads was like um they're the Democrats are letting uh, the illegals flee our country or or swarm into our country, many of them carrying drugs. And it had a clip of people like climbing fences. I was like, dog, what the hell is going on? Dog. I can't. You see the white dude who was like, if you're if you hate cops because cops, next time you're in trouble, call a crackhead. <laughs> Crazy. Who's writing this? Call a crackhead, and crackhead is a dog whistle for, for black people, right? You don't, you know, he didn't say call a drug addict. He nah. didn't say crackhead uh, puts in your mind a black person, right? The media was crackhead, crackhead, this, crackhead, that. He didn't say call a heroin addicted mom in the Midwest because remember, it's the crack epidemic when it's black people. It's the opioid crisis when it's white people. Man. Even though crack was introduced into to black marginalized communities by the U.S. government to help sell arms, somehow it became our fault. Niggas did not have no planes to come from Guatemala and in Colombia to get cocaine in. Somebody had to help, but no. Somebody had to help. Kev, what did that billboard say when we were walking back to the hotel? It said, I'm a conservative. I'm a gun owner. My name is Josh Henderson or something crazy. What was the third thing? That's what it was. I'm a conservative and a gun over and I'm for Fetterman. We were just like, <laughs> man, turn it off. Take all this stuff down. And quit texting me, man. I don't Oh, they been I literally texting. Three the minutes. amount the amount of paper we have had to put in the recycle from all the ads and stuff. God. I really wish I really that's the one thing that I would love to be changed on a congressional level, but it'll never be the case because this is a capitalist company. I mean, country is if there was no, um, you weren't allowed to spend money advertising. I wish there was one singular website. Yeah. That you had to input all the data for either your platforms, which you were running on. And then we all go look at that. And that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. That's all. That's Don't it. send that's me no it. brochure. Don't have nobody call me. Because all I'm going to do is look at your picture. <laughs> and see what part of you in. And if you ain't a black person, next is a person of color. Next is your gender. And if you ain't filling out those things, you already, then I'm already off of you. Already. <laughs> if, it's two black, if it's two white men, I'm going to be looking at your close friends on Instagram. Every Where time. are they? <laughs> are they Every colored? Time. Are they? Do you have black folk in here? What is what's going on? All right. Well, we love y'all. We'll we'll let y'all know when we do the bonus episode later this week. Um, if you're on Patreon, we're getting ready to do the Ball of the Beautiful live here shortly. Angel, the link will be coming right away. Hey, Amen. Uh, vote. Well, I guess by the time the rest of y'all see it, it'll be too late. But we hope you voted. Hey, Amen. Wash your underarms, brush your teeth. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. There's another banger for you. There's another one. There's another banger for you. There's another one. There's another banger for you. There's another banger for you. With my boy Kevin on stage. And that chick angel.